Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be looking at sharpening marking knives and this should be a rather uh, sharp video. So without further ado, let's get to the point. Now I've done several videos recently on marking knives. I did one making a knife with the Tay Tools blank uh, as well as talking through a couple different types. And if you want to see those videos, I'll leave a link to those down below. But the one thing I didn't talk about those is how do you actually go about sharpening this? Uh, it's a small bell and so it can be very hard and it is a bit uh, scary. And there's a lot of different ways to do it. Everyone out there you see is going to have a different method, something that works for them. And so I kind of want to look at what I do and some of the things that might help you out. And this is where I give the normal disclaimer of uh, if you are a professional knife sharper, this video is going to drive you bonkers. Because we're not talking about sharpening professional knives, we're talking about sharpening marking knives, doing it quickly and getting back to the work. So I'm not worrying about perfection, I'm just worrying about getting this sharp enough to do its work. Here I have a few different marking knives. This one is the Tay Tools marking knife. It's a rather thick plate. Uh, it has the double bevel or the two-sided bevel, depending upon which you want to talk, because some people will complain that a double bevel isn't a double bevel unless both bevels are on the same edge. This one is my personal, which we'll be talking about the bevels I have on this, which are a lot of craziness going on here. And then I've got an actual double bevel knife. This one has both bevels on the same cutting edge. Uh, but this one is more of a chip cutting knife. It is nice for getting into small corners and sometimes I'll pull it out for making a mark. A lot of people like the simple straight edge for a marking knife. It makes it very easy for getting back into corners. You just have to be careful about getting all the way into something because rather than having a bevel, you actually have a full side on either side that's sharpened. Now I'm not going to be talking about these two today because they're fairly straightforward. They're just like any other knife. So today we're basically going to be talking about these. The standard double bevel marking knife and the interesting thing about these is you have to treat them as if they are two separate chisels rather than one knife. So now I want to take you through this and show you my sharpening method in one swoop and show you the whole thing in real time. First thing I want to do is I want to grab it so I have three fingers that go underneath the knife. My index finger comes up around on top and yeah I do have black on my nails. I was doing some staining yesterday and my gloves leaked. Sorry about that. So three fingers underneath, index finger up on top, thumb on the side here. Then with my other hand, which in case my left hand, I'm going to put my index finger on the tip here. And I'm going to put my thumb in this little crevice here. And I'm almost pinching the blade. All the downward force is from my other hand. My downward force is on this finger. This hand is just supporting the blade, setting the angle on it. So that all the downward force is supplied by this. I'm pushing on that bevel, holding it down in place. So first thing I do is grab some Windex. Apply just a little bit to the plates. If you want to see these plates, I have a link to them down below. Set it here on my coarse stone. Hold it here. Put the pressure down. Let that bevel feel so I can sit there. I can feel what that bevel is and that allows me to hold it in place. Just a couple quick strokes. I want to make sure I have scratches all the way along that bevel and I have a burr curling up on the back. I need just a little bit more. That burr isn't quite enough yet. It was just in one spot. It wasn't all the way across it. There, now I've got a burr running all the way across the blade there. I'm going to put it onto the other bevel, doing the exact same thing. Feel that bevel. Check it. Got scratches all the way along it. And then, yep, I got a burr all the way along the back on both bevels. Now we're going to come over here onto the fine plate. And let's check that one. What we did is we removed all the scratches from this one and now they're finer scratches from this one. Go back on to the other bevel. And there we go. Now we all have fine scratches on all of the surfaces. We're going to come over here onto the extra fine. Do the same thing again, holding it in the exact same way. Just a few strokes. That's good. Onto this one. Just a few strokes, and that's good. Now, we have a burr on the two blades sticking down. I'm going to put it on here, and just with a light stroke on the back, I'm going to do that. And that causes the burr, rather than going down, now the burr is coming up. We're going to take it over here to the strop, and I'm just going to do this with one hand, holding it pretty much the exact same way. Just 10 or so strokes one way, 10 or so strokes the other way. Oop. And then I'm going to put it on its back down here. Just a couple strokes this way, a couple strokes this way, on its back. And any tiny burr that's left on there, we're going to work it off until it just falls off. You just have one little bit of a burr left. 
there it goes. The bur just fell off. So now we've got an incredibly sharp edge all the way along there coming to an incredibly sharp point. Now this knife is incredibly sharp and will cut a really nice line across anything you want. But we have a very, 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 very delicate tip right there. And that tip will bend a lot of times. If I put it in the wood and I drag it, that tip is already bent over and it has a bit of a neck, it has a bit of a curl on it. If this were to hit anything, if I were to actually drive it into the wood, I can bend that tip over even farther because it's just so fine and so delicate that there's a bit of a hook on there. And in many cases, that is really not that big of an issue because it's just so small, I can take it over here and do that and it's right back to where it should be. But if that hook bends over too far, then you're going to want to get rid of it. And that's why on most of my marking knives, my personal one, my tip is very, very rounded. And you can see how this doesn't have too much of an actual tip. You'll have to actually notice that there are several facets running all the way around this. And that's how I like it to be. Rather than having an incredibly fine tip, I have a lot of facets. Now there's a couple problems with that. If I'm trying to get into the corner of a dovetail, I'm going to be a millimeter or so away from getting that line going all the way in there, which 99.9% .9 of the time, that millimeter is not a problem. But if it is, then I have one that's set up where I keep that perfect knife on there just to nick in there, and that will allow me to get all the way into the point. So there is a really nice thing to having that point, but it's almost never that I need to have that incredibly sharp point on there. And that's why I tend to round it off a little bit. So let me show you what I do with this. So to get that rounded off point, I'm going to come back through here, and I'm just going to do a few strokes where rather than keeping it flat on the bevel, I'm going to lift it up a bit. On this side, I'm going to lift it up a bit on this side, and then I'm going to come over here and here, and all I'm basically doing is bending that tip back. And now I've got it slightly rounded right on the tip, but I've got that, that the actual tip is bent over and carving that way. So I'm going to come back here and I'll push it forward, and that's going to grind that hook off. And I only have to do this once when the knife is brand new and fresh. After that, now I have a slightly rounded tip that's not going to bend up on me and break on me, but I can get into most everything. Just with that little bit on there, it saves that tip, so I'm not going to be fighting with having that hook on there all the time. And the more I do it, the more that rounded point slowly grows, and over time it ends up looking like this one, which I've had for, what, four or five years now. So now when I sharpen this one, I'm actually going to put it on that bevel, and I'm going to pull it back, and as I get to the end, I'm going to lift it up. So I'm starting here flat, and by the end, I'm lifting the blade up. So it looks like something like this. So that my, my bevel isn't actually a perfect bevel from one side to the other. It rounds slightly to get rid of that tip a little bit. And just like that, we're ready to go. Then we're going to come over here, put that burr over, give it a little bit of stropping. And there, we have an incredibly sharp knife. It's just missing the ever so slight bit of the tip, but now it is a far more durable tip, so if I drive it into things, if I accidentally bend it, or if it goes into something hard, I'm not going to worry about that tip bending over, but I still get really nice sharp lines. If I want to cut up against something, I can get that beautifully sharp edge, and I don't have to worry about the tip running over on me. Now, as with any sharpening skill, this isn't something that you can immediately just pick up and do perfectly and you're good to go. Now, if you were here in person, I could show you a few tips and tricks and things like, oh, your elbow's down a little bit far, lift that up, or work more with your body. Uh, there's a lot of little things that you can do and pick up. But the big point I want to get across is don't worry about it too much. Don't chase perfection. You don't need that absolutely perfectly sharp tip on there. It's not going to help you in most everything you do. Number two, just jump in and do it. Have a little bit of fun. It is the best way to learn. The more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And it may take a while. It may take quite a few sharpenings until you're proficient enough that you can just go bang, bang, bang and get back to work. This is a great tool to practice your freehand sharpening with because it doesn't have to be incredibly sharp. I still let this get really, really dull and I may end up sharpening it once every six, seven, eight months or more because it still cuts a line. But then every now and then when I need that really nice line, uh, then I'll bring it over here and sharpen it, but that's not really often, and most of the time I let it get really dull, 
So if it's something that you don't sharpen perfectly, it's not a big loss. So have a little bit of fun with it. Relax, enjoy your time, and don't stress too much about it. It's just a marking knife. When a marking knife comes fresh from the store and has that gorgeously perfect tip on it, and the first time you do something and bend it up and be like, oh no, what am I gonna do with this tip? Don't, don't worry about it. The, the, the tip on the marking knife really isn't that important. Usually my cutting surface is actually back from the tip a little bit where I'm making the mark. So don't worry about it. Actually, maybe even round that tip off so it's not as much of a problem. And uh, get on with life because there are far more important things than getting this perfectly sharp. So I hope you liked this video. If you did have any thoughts, comments, or snide remarks, or ideas, let me know those down below. I'd love to hear that. Also, I do want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. You guys are the reason why I can keep making videos like this. Thank you for that. That means so much. Without patrons and members here on the channel, this would not be here. So thank you for that. If you do ever meet someone who's scrolling over here on the side, tell them thank you because they're keeping the lights on. I think that'll about do it for today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. This is a seriously sharp video. Ah, no, that's too blunt of a joke. Let's cut that out.